From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Joe McNabb, Johnny. Try Eastern Indemnity. Oh, hi, Joe. What's up? The star of Cape Town. Star of Cape Town. Constellation, celebrity, or ship? Wrong three times. The star of Cape Town is a diamond about the size of a jumbo olive. Oh, sounds like it'll make a nice ornament for a martini. Except I'm strictly a lemon peel man. Now, this is serious, Johnny. I'd like you to take a look at it. Now, what's so interesting about it, except it's probably worth $100,000? Make it 150 That's what we've insured it for. Oh? Got quite a history to it. Three men we know of have been killed over it in the last 50 years. This stone I'd like to see. Where is it? Name of the stone, Johnny. Star of Cape... Hey, wait a minute. In Cape Town, South Africa? That's right. Interested? I'll be right over. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates Home Office. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Star of Cape Town matter. Expense account item one, $1.50 cab fare from my apartment at the office of Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Joe McNabb was waiting for me. Sit down, Johnny. Thanks. So what about the star of Cape Town? Sounds interesting. You're interested, we're worried. What about it? Ever hear of Andrew Lanning Forbes the Third? Forbes, Forbes. Seems to me I've seen his picture in the papers a couple of times. International playboy type, isn't he? That's the one. He owns the star of Cape Town now, inherited the stone after the recent death of his aunt. So? Johnny, like I told you, we've got that diamond insured for 150000 bucks. But Forbes treats it like it was a 10-cent store hunk of costume jewelry. What do you mean? He carts it from place to place wherever he goes. Paris, Rome, the Riviera, you name it, he's been there. And so has the star of Cape Town. Ooh, you mean that Oh, he keeps it in hotels, safes, stuff like that, but that isn't good enough. We want him to put it in permanent custody somewhere. Yeah, I see your point. But he won't seem to listen to reason. And right now, it's a particularly bad period for us. How come? Forbes seems to be in one of his party-giving moods. He has them every once in a while. About three weeks at a time, a big party every night wherever he happens to be. Then he quiets down for a month or two. Yeah, probably resting up. But how, uh, how come he's in Cape Town now? Who knows? Who knows why he goes anywhere he does? Oh, brother, sounds like a real character. Yeah, but what we want you to do is to talk him out of being a character long enough to put that diamond in a safe place and to keep an eye on it until he does. We got a plane reservation for you tonight at midnight. Tonight? Now, just a minute. Now, look, if it's the money you're worried about, don't be. This means a lot to us. We're willing to pay accordingly. Joe, you may not believe this, but I wasn't thinking about the money. Then what? Those three men who got killed over that diamond. You told me about them over the phone. Oh, that. Look, the diamond's 50 years old. Those three killings were 20, 30 years ago. Just the same. Three is always a crowd. And I wouldn't like to see it increase by one. (laughs) Expense account item 2360, cab fare to my apartment to pack and then to the airport. Where Joe McNabb met me and told me three tired jokes in two minutes in a very subtle attempt to keep my mind off the three dead men as he gently steered me to the plane. Item three, plane fare to Cape Town, South Africa. The plane came in over Cape Town in the early afternoon. Off to one side toward the famous Devil's Peak and down below, the bay glittered like... Yeah, it looked like everything was trying to remind me of that diamond. As if I could forget a stone worthy of 150,000 in the lives of three people. Item five, cab fare to the residence of Andrew Lanning Forbes III. He'd rented a mansion on the side of a hill. I was ushered onto a terrace overlooking the city and the bay. Forbes was waiting for me with a drink in his hand. He was a thin-faced, elegant, tired-looking character whose deep tan didn't hide the lines on his face. He could have been anywhere from 35 to 50. May I offer you a drink, Dollar? Well, uh, a little early in the afternoon, isn't it? Oh, is it? It might cool you off. Okay, thanks. Say, it's uh, quite a place you have up here. Uh, it's adequate. <laughs> you seem amused. Well, there must be 15, 16 rooms at least. Roughly. Adequate seems kind of like an understatement. Uh, quite possibly. Here you are. Ah, thanks. Look, Dollar, it was very thoughtful of the insurance company to send you all the way down here, but... Also, it was... uh, Well, uh, wouldn't unnecessary be the word? Well, that depends, Mr. Forbes. (laughs) What do you mean? 
The company I represent is pretty jittery over that diamond of yours, the Star of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see it? Well, yes, but I think we ought to... Yeah, here it is. You carry it around in your pocket? Well, why not? I have no holes in my pockets. Oh, now, look, Forbes. But no, 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 I'm, I'm really not as bad as that dollar. I, I was expecting you, so I thought I'd play a little joke on you. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Forbes, that kind of humor shortens my life. Yeah, well, I suppose it was a bit cruel. Well, there it is. What do you think of it? McNabb said it was the size of a jumbo olive. Looks more like a golf ball to me. Quite vulgar, isn't it? Oh, what a cutting job they did on it. Whew, beautiful. There must be a thousand facets. Yeah, all of them glittering, all of them cold, all of them surface. <laughs> Rather like life, don't you think? Um, look, Mr. Forbes, if you don't mind, let's skip the philosophy for a minute and talk about the diamond. Oh, of course. You're still concerned about his safety. Well, perhaps this will reassure you. Will you come with me? Sure. This way. I have a very efficient wall safe in my bedroom. In here. So, you see, I do take precautions. Here we are. There. Are you reassured now? No. Your bedroom opens off the terrace. It'll be too easy for somebody to get it that safe. Very well, Mr. Dollar. After tonight, I shall place the diamond in a bank vault. That's the best news I've had all day. Yes. Tonight's party will be my last for a while. Party? For Agatha. Who's Agatha? Oh, she's my elder sister. She's on a world tour arriving here in Cape Town later this afternoon. I'm going to surprise her. Hey, wait a minute. You came all the way here to Cape Town to throw a surprise party for your sister? Well, I wasn't doing anything else at the moment. <laughs> Why not? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons, but uh, they probably wouldn't sound convincing to you. Probably not. Although they probably would sound convincing to Agatha. Oh? Yeah, she and I are quite different. Half the time she worries about me, and the other, other half the time she disapproves of me. She considers it quite beneath the dignity of the Forbes name for me to go popping around from place to place like this. I see. Uh, she's quite devoted to the cause of the Forbes name. To make sure it keeps standing for, well, whatever it's supposed to stand for. I was never quite sure myself. So you're giving her a surprise party tonight. Will she like the idea? Probably not. That's what makes it fun. Oh, by the way, would you like to come? <laughs> well, under the circumstances, I think I'd better. I, um... I wonder if I could have a guest list. A guest list? Oh, good heavens. You mean you don't have one? Well, of course not. I just invite people here and there and wait to see who turns up. Then you don't have any idea who all's coming? Absolutely not. Donna, that's the only thing that makes these parties worthwhile. Oh, great. A character with a quaint habit of carrying his diamond in his pocket, throwing a party where he didn't know who was coming. This was a situation not calculated to help my peace of mind, believe me. Forbes had his driver take me back to town. I stopped along the way at police headquarters and talked to Lieutenant Van Tyle, who agreed to furnish a man to help me keep an eye on the party. Expense account item six, cab fare back out to Forbes' house that evening for the party. I thought I was getting there early, but there were already quite a few people about. A stocky bartender shoved a drink in my hand as I walked in, and I took a look around. Quite a brawl. Then I spotted a girl with honey-colored hair and a green dress that matched her eyes. Well, it was as good a place to start as any. Hi. Hi. My name's Johnny. I know. Oh? I'm Sheila. You a friend of Forbes? My, you are new around here, aren't you? What do you mean? You'll find me at most of Andy's parties. He arranges my transportation. I see. Do you? What's your excuse for being here in this gay, mad throng? You an old friend, too? Uh, matter of fact, no. I just met him this afternoon, and he invited me to come. That's par for the course. Ah, oh, here you are. Oh, Forbes. I'm glad you two have gotten acquainted. Enjoying yourself, Sheila? Delirious. Oh, isn't she wonderful, Johnny? She's always so gracefully bored. You see, Johnny, I perform quite a useful function around here. I'm always good for laughs. Uh, yeah. Well, uh... Is your sister enjoying the party, Forbes? Agatha? Why, of course not. <laughs> haven't you met her yet, John? No, no, I haven't. Oh, she's over by the window. The thin, aristocratic, tired-looking lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, that's her look of disdain. She thoroughly disapproves of this whole party, and of me, of course. 
And of me. <laughs> Come along, Johnny. I'd like you to meet Agatha. Uh oh, you're taking a chance. She'd probably disapprove of me, too. Oh, no, no. You look like the respectable type. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> She'd thoroughly approve. I. Oh, oh, I seem to have another guest arriving. Would you two excuse me? I'll introduce you to Agatha later, Johnny. Yeah, sure. The perfect host, when he wants to be. Oh. Who's the new arrival? Her name is Helen. Andy met her a day or two ago. Well, I'll say this for her. Yes. Isn't she? <laughs> Sorry. Don't be. I'm used to it. You know something, Sheila? I don't get you. Oh, I'm not so hard to figure out, Johnny. I think you are. You don't like these parties any more than Agatha. Oh, now watch it, Johnny. You start comparing me to her, and she's going to disapprove of you. Okay, but I still don't get it. You don't like the parties or Forbes' other friends, yet you keep... Tagging along. Yeah, I've got a perfect attendance record. Why? Well, I guess there's one obvious reason, but that would sound real corny. Maybe not. So let's just say that after you've been riding the merry-go-round long enough, standing on solid ground doesn't seem normal. Oh. Well... Maybe if you keep riding that merry-go-round, you'll grab the brass ring someday. Don't bet on it. Sheila drifted over to the bar, where she sat quietly drinking the rest of the evening. I somehow felt sorry for her, but I knew she'd bought her own ticket to the merry-go-round, at least for the first ride. I looked over at Forbes and started sweating. He was showing the diamond off to the party. But before I could get to him, Agatha did. She must have told him, in dignified but firm tones, to put the ice on ice. He laughed and took it back to his room, so I relaxed. The party dragged on. Agatha managed to look frigidly pained the rest of the evening, but Forbes was obviously enjoying himself with Helen. They danced, then went out on the terrace. Sheila turned her back and concentrated on her drink. Finally, I went over to the bar. Sorry, Johnny. Looks like the bartender's gone home. That's probably a good idea. Good night. She headed carefully for the door and went out. Then I realized I hadn't seen Forbes for 10 or 15 minutes. I went out on the terrace. Nobody in sight. I walked to Forbes' bedroom door. Mr. Forbes? Forbes? No answer. One lamp was lit. Forbes was on the floor. The knife had gone in low under his ribs. He probably hadn't made a sound. Nearby was the case in which he kept the star of Cape Town. It was open and empty. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a girl who is exciting, beautiful... And deadly. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.